Well, today is hardcore coding theory, relatively speaking. It's still 64 shades of grey, for those of you looking for the sequel. And remember, the sequel is always better than the original thing. Is this 50 shades darker? <laughs> yeah, 64, 64 shades, shades darker. darker. I'd send pictures back from Mariner 9, a Reed Muller code was used. And Irving Reed is a very famous coding theorist, and this worked incredibly well. They were ever so pleased about the results they got from this. And the nice thing about it from the theory point of view is that if you want to go all mathematical and say it's a, a multivariable polynomial, blah, 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 you know, you can do that because it is, but I can disguise that for you with Reed Muller, and I can say, look, everyone, trust me, it's just an exercise in recursion that we're all familiar with, and you've got to be prepared to do concatenation of bit strings, which I think in North America and Canada is called bit fiddling, but here in the UK we call it bit twiddling. But twiddling, fiddling, we don't mind which. Recursion and bit twiddling is all we need to understand how those pictures were sent. But, because it's a recursive procedure, it takes us almost on a sort of magical mystery tour of everything we've ever done about codes. Because as you build up to something usable in terms of lots of error correction, you meet lots of other almost familiar friends on the way. The NKD notation is what we're going to use. This comes from a previous video where we qualitatively took a look at pictures from Mars and how they were sent, but of course we're now getting down to hardcore details involving recursion and bit twiddling. But just for revision, the total number of bits in what you're sending, including payload bits, message bits, and parity check bits, that's n. Within that, how many bits are devoted to the message itself, k, What's your distance? And the bigger that number is, the more errors you can correct. So the correctable errors is your distance here, minus one, divided by two, and take the floor of. The thing that we are headed for at the end of our recursion is 32 bits total, six bits of message, 16 is the distance. This magic code, when we've got there, will actually correct up to seven wrong bits in 32. And, I mean, some of you will say, well, why couldn't you do this earlier? And the answer is, it's a trade-off. The trade-off is we've only got six payload bits, whereas with things like Hamming codes, it would have been more like 26. You pay your money, you make your choice. OK, well, how do we do this recursion then? How does it develop? Every recursion has to have a sort of bottom point where it finishes. You know, factorial zero is one, that sort of thing. Well, here we're going to develop the, known in some textbooks as the H sub N codes. And the reason for that is that they are actually derived from things called Hadamard matrices. There's lots of ways of getting at these Read Muller codes, but the fact that there is a Hadamard matrix method of getting at it is good news for us, because what it means is you can do it recursively. And as computer scientists, we're all totally and completely happy with recursion. I know we are. The zeroth one of these codes, the very simplest, is just so simple, it's laughable. It's just the single bit, one. But, Every good recursion has got to have an algorithm from how you get from this one to the previous one to the next one and so on. The rule for constructing, shall we call it HN, is every stage you take 2 to the power n minus 1 zeros and 2 to the power n minus 1 ones. So in other words, you get a bunch of zeros and a bunch of ones joined together by concatenation. Plus, at every stage of the recursion, you do twofold repetitions of previous pattern from the previous version of the recursion. It's one of these things, let's actually start doing it, and I'll keep cross referring here and you'll get the hang. H0 is 1, that's God given. You can't contest that, that's the bottom. Okay then, so what about H1? Well, what this is saying is that for H1, our end value is 1. So we're going to have to put in a pattern here that is 2 to the power n minus 1 zeros. Well, if n is 1, that's 2 to the power of 1 minus 1, 2 to the power of 0. 
but anything to the power of zero is one. one. So you start off with one zero and one one, okay? But the rule says, and as well as that, your working set, this is called your basis set of things you're building up, your working set must also include a twofold repetition of the things you had previously. Well, the only thing I had previously was a one. So what's a twofold repetition of a one? One one. It's all to do with concatenation. We're not at the moment doing any arithmetic or exclusive or anything, we're just joining bit patterns together. So here we are then, it's one one. Now, rule here, which is a quite general thing in developing these codes is, you can always introduce a zero vector, as it's called. If I keep calling these things vectors, don't worry, it's a very in phrase, you can band it around in the pub, but all it really means is bit strings. You can always introduce a zero vector of order n. What that means is, absolutely for free and from nowhere, I can add to this zero, zero. Okay? And if I was working with bit strings as a will eventually that are four bits long, I can just bring in four zeros. It's bound to be there. The zero vector at whatever length is always part of your set of code words. That's fine. So you can look at this now and say, do you know, you've almost got a valid code there, haven't you, in two bits? Look, you've got zero, one, 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 and you say that absolutely for free, I can have zero, zero. Do you know, if you just added one zero in there, you'd have a complete set of four bit possibilities, wouldn't you? Yes, and here is a lovely way to introduce you to what I blather on about from time to time. It's called a linear code. It means that if you add these things together with exclusive or, they'll deliver something else in the same family. Well, look, there's only one thing we're missing in this family of four bit possibilities. So if I do zero, one, and I'll indicate my exclusive or, binary addition without carry, with that plus, what happens if you add 0, 1 to 1, 1? Well, 1 and 0 is 1, because they differ. 1 and 1 is 0, because they're the same. Hurrah! That has delivered me my final possibility of 1, 0. So what we're saying is at every level of this recursion, you take what's called your basis vectors that come from this recursive algorithm, lots of zeros, lots of ones, uh, plus double ups of what you had last time, you do all of those, but then you add together what you've got in all possible combinations, and you know that they form a closed family. You'll get to a stage where they won't deliver anything different they just rattle around within themselves. Now look at this fabulous code, Sean. It's so familiar to us, isn't it? But it's not very exciting because in n, k, d terms, what are we saying that this is? It's got a two-bit code, but the payload is two bits long. There is no space for any error correction. And if there's no space for any error correction whatsoever, then there must be distance one apart. They all differ by one bit as you go from zero through to four. I have to confess to being completely lost at this moment. I understood what you said, but I don't see how it has a bearing on where we're going. It will. In the okay. next time round, believe me, this will have such a bearing as you can't imagine. What I'm saying is in the trivial case, this doesn't give us an error correcting code at all, so it's useless. But we recur one more time. I might need your help here. H2. Oh, crumbs. You need two to the n minus one zeros and two to the n minus ones. That's always the new thing introduced every time, yeah? It's two to the power one, yeah, which, which is two. Easy. So you need two zeros and two ones. Plus twofold repetitions. Now, uh, I did derive that, but that wasn't part of the basis set. Twofold repetitions of what you had last time. Zero, okay, zero, one. zero, one, zero, one, and one, 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 one. Don't worry about the zeros, you can always add those in. At this stage, if we want to add in a four zeros, zero vector, we can do so at whatever stage we want. Is that, so that's just like a, you can have the code of nothing? Yes, yeah. yes. It's a bit like, you know, when, when uh, you're doing arithmetic systems, you find zeros are useful. But it really is like saying five plus zero is five, right? Mm -hmm. But of course, with exclusive or, it's handy to have it because if you accidentally exclusive or something with itself, because they're identical, it'll yield a bunch of zeros for you. So it's handy to have that there in as a kind of check 
that it didn't just arise from outer space, it could have arisen from adding two things together that are absolutely identical. These are what's called basis vectors for the vector space, and they're four bits long. But from these, you can generate all of the four bit possibilities you're after by simply adding, either taking them as they come or adding them together with exclusive all. And I'll show this now on this sheet, which I'll carefully introduce over here. I've introduced a 4-bit zero vector, which sometimes is called bold zero. That is the zero vector of whatever length you need. Remember the x1 we got? Two noughts, two ones, fine. x2, naught, one, naught, one. x3, one, 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 one. Those are the three we started with. Now, add them together in all possible combinations until you don't get anything new. And I mean exclusive or, of course. x1 plus x2, zero, one, one, zero. x1 plus x3, one one zero zero. How about x2 plus x3? One zero one zero. And finally, the final possible combination is all three of them. And of course, you know, it doesn't matter what order you do these exclusive ors in. x1 plus x2 plus x3 is the same as x3 plus x1 plus x2. You do all that one, you get 1001. Now, when you look here, look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You've generated eight possibilities out of all the 16 possibilities in four bits. But what I'm saying to you is, you take any two of those now and add them together again, you won't get anything new. If I take 1010, do an exclusive all on those, I will get 0, 1, 1, 0. There it is, look, just, above, yeah. just yeah. above. Try it with any of those and you won't get anything new. The other thing I'd point out to you here is what is the minimum distance of this code? Well, look, the 0011, how distant is that from four zeros? Two. Two, yeah. The only exception is if you take the zero vector with the vector that's all ones, you will get a much bigger distance, you get four. But you're not worried about the maximum one, you're worried about the minimum one. So this thing then, it's not exactly award winning, but it's a step on the way. We've now got something, let me, Use my crib sheet and write down for you. H2 is a 432 code. And you look at that and you say, well, that's a bit better than last time where we were in any, any error correction. But we all know from previous videos, if a thing's only got a distance of two, you can't correct an error, you can only detect it. And when you look back at these set of possible code words, you say, ah, oh, we've seen that. It's actually carrying a three bit payload with one parity check bit at the end of it. And overall it's always even parity. Yeah, but we're on our way. We can now fast forward and say, what about H3? What we're gonna develop from here is basically a set of 16 eight bit possibilities. And if you sort of say, well, this is H3, what is its NKD rating? It's an eight, Four, four, code. We're coming on. We're getting a bit of error correction at last now in this recursive builder pathway. Four minus one, Sean. Three, three, three over three, one. Don't need to round down. So it can correct one error. It's getting up to Hamming code standards, this is. We're up to 844 at this H3 code but probably the most equivalent Hamming code I could pluck out for you is 743. Perfect illustration of trade-off, look. That will only correct one error, but it's got a payload of four bits. That's got a payload of four bits, and this is pretty comparable. How far do you have to go with this before you get up Well, to... we've done H3, you have to get to H5. And we will draw a veil over H4 completely. I will leave you to read the handout and work out the basis vectors. Do it all for yourself. Or if you can't be bothered to, you can use my ORC program, which has got an option in to generate them. Let me just say H4 has a NKD rating of 1658. And that's very nice. Look at that. 8 minus 1, 7, 7 half, 3 and a half, round it down. It could correct three errors in a 16-bit payload. This is looking good. But those clever engineers at JPL and elsewhere said, oh, if we went one stage further, we could do even better. H5, this is our target. 32, 6, 
16. Notice what's happening is that at every stage of these Hadamard Reed-Muller codes, the size, the length of them, it's exponential, it's doubling. It's gone 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Next one will be 64. So they are expanding at a heck of a rate. And as some sardonic person has once said in the comments on this, the trouble with extending these codes is it only gives the cosmic rays more chance to damage them, and that's quite true. So this is a fabulous compromise, as you can see now. Um, I'm sure, I hope you've all by now seen the previous video with the pictures from Mars. If not, you can always go and consult it. But this was just about perfect. You get a 6-bit payload packed inside 32. And with a lot of hard work at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, you can deterministically decode every one of these vectors to get its shade of grey out of it so long as it's not being hit by more than seven errors. You might have a big decoding effort to do this quickly enough um, because it can very easily mount up, uh, but that solved the problem for you. Mission accomplished really I think. This is, uh, it solves all our error correcting desires for this particular level of technology that happened in the Mariner 9. It was always counted a great success. Of course things have moved on from there a lot since that date. We've used Secure Shell to bridge across to something I'm more familiar with, OpenSUSE Linux, and I think, I can't remember in the previous